Hey everybody, welcome back. I want to show you something. This is a project I've been working on. I've got a Raspberry Pi here and attached to the Raspberry Pi is a board that's been made available by Northwest Digital Radio. It's called a UDRC, that stands for Universal Digital Radio Controller. It plugs onto a Raspberry Pi and we hook it up to amateur radios and we can do all kinds of interesting digital things with it. I want to show you this case here though. I decided to design this case. I use a laser cutter at our Bellingham Makerspace and cut the case out of acrylic. But there's something special here that I want to draw your attention to. Let me show you closer. I designed this case so that we could add a standard barrel connector to put DC voltage into this product. If you've ordered one of these cases, this video will show you how you can install that barrel connector yourself. If you ordered the optional power kit with your UDRC case, you'll see that it included these red and black wires and this little barrel jack connector. These wires right here will fit into two holes that are already on the board and this barrel connector fits into a hole that I've put into the side of the case. Let's start by taking a look at the UDRC board itself. One of the things that you'll notice right away is that there are a whole bunch of through holes on the board. There's two sets of them here and another pair of holes here. The team at Northwest Digital Radio has given us access to all the general purpose input output pins on the Raspberry Pi. In fact, we have two sets of pins here that match up with most of the pins that we would normally have access to on the Raspberry Pi itself. In fact, the only ones we don't have access to are the ones that the UDRC is using for its work. Behind this blue 15 pin connector, you will see another set of 16 holes. These provide link to this radio connector. So what's with all these extra holes in the board anyway? Why are they there? The team at Northwest Digital Radio wants us to experiment. Their motto is putting the amateur back in amateur radio. With these extra holes on the board, we can do our own thing. For example, one of the hams in our amateur radio club has installed a GPS module from Adafruit right here on this board. The board we're working on today is actually a UDRC2. This is the second version of the board to come out. Over here, I have the original UDRC, and this one, I've already added some things to it. You'll see right here, where I have already added a little connector, that's going to take the power lead. We'll be adding one to this board as well. There's some significant differences, though, between the two UDRCs. The first UDRC here came with this connector here. Its original purpose was to hook up to a Yesu Fusion repeater. That's what this connector is for. They came up with the idea of adding a 6-pin DIN connector to it as well. These are tied together on the original UDRC so that you can hook it up to an ordinary UHF or VHF amateur radio transceiver. The pins here and the pins here are tied together. They decided that that was kind of a clever idea and a lot of people liked this. Then in the new version the UDRC2, these connectors are separate. You can hook up two separate radios and run them at the same time with this controller. That's where the term UDRC2 comes from, two radios. Adding our power connector to the original UDRC is easy and straightforward. Take a look. The through holes that we want to connect to on the original board are well labeled. You'll find them right here, plus 12 volts and ground. But now look at the UDRC2. Not only are the labels no longer there, but additional components have been added right next to our through holes. So there's good news and there's bad news. The good news is that our 12 volt and ground through holes are still in the same place. The bad news is that this surface mount component is right underneath the edge of our JST connector. 
My friend Brian Hoyer, KD7UDR, who designed this board, really likes what we're able to do with this connector. And he promises me that in the next run of these UDRC2s or whatever they decide to call the next run, there will be room for this connector. But hey, we're hams. We're do-it-yourselfers. We can make this work. What we'll need is your favorite hobby knife, and we will just cut ourselves a little notch in this connector so that it will fit onto our board properly. Now we make sure that the polarity is right. We've got red wires for positive, black wires for negative. When the connector is in place, notice that the red wire is going to be at this end where the 12 volts is and the black wire will be at that side where the ground is. So what we'll have to do is cut a notch in the back of this connector. We'll set this down and we'll just take our little hobby knife work our way into it. You don't have to go too far. And then we'll turn it around and from the underneath side cut back to that slice we made there before. Maybe work our way again from this edge until it's ready to come off. There. With that notch removed, we can place our connector into the UDRC and it will fit over those surface mount parts. Okay, that looks good. Let's solder it on. We'll place the little JST connector into the board where it goes. Then I'm going to take a little piece of uh, tape and I'm going to just put that on there to hold it in place so that I can turn the board over and solder those two connectors. They'll be right there. My solder. And we will solder just one pin first. I can turn the board over, move the tape. wants to stick to my fingers and check the alignment make sure that it's the way I want it looks like I can bend this uh, a little bit this way I'll just heat up that solder and using my finger on the other side I can feel when it's sitting firm against the PCB I like the looks of that we'll solder the other pin that. Now as a safety measure I'm going to double check the polarity and make sure that I put that connector in the right way. Okay I brought my meter out here and I've got it set here to check the continuity. Well if I put my uh, probes together you should hear a beep. And I will plug our connector in, in like so and I'm going to take the black lead right here and I will attach it to kind of pinch it on one of these leads and then I'm going to take my other lead and I'm going to touch this metal case here where the six pin din plug would go and we'll see if we have continuity to ground that's good that means we've got that in there right now let's prepare the other end now this barrel connector is an interesting device. We use it to bring in our 12 volts and our ground. But when you look at it, you're going to see that clearly it has three connectors. So 12 volts and ground, what's with the third connector? Well, I can show you. 
if I take my meter again to check continuity, we have three lugs here. I'll put one probe on this lug and the other probe on that lug and notice they're tied together. They're the same thing, but not really. You see, not only is this a jack, it's also a switch. If we take a plug and insert it into the connector and do the same thing, I'll put my probes on the same two lugs, there is no continuity. So what's with this anyway? Well, first of all, it has nothing to do with our project. But you've probably used this many times and maybe didn't know it. Have you ever had something maybe like a radio that could be run off of batteries? You put batteries in it, it runs fine, but you also have an AC adapter. And when you plug in the AC adapter, it runs off of that instead of the batteries. Well, this connector works like a switch. So when the batteries are in your radio, the current travels through the switch and the radio runs from the batteries. As soon as you hook up an AC adapter, however, that disconnects the batteries from ground and you're running the radio from the AC source instead. What's important to our project is we need to know which connectors we solder to and which one gets a red wire and which one gets a black wire. Well, if you examine the jack carefully, you'll see that the three lugs are each a different length. They end at the same place, but they start in different places around the base. The shortest one right here that starts from the very edge and comes up is the center connector. That's going to be our positive lug. The, the second longest one right here is where we are going to hook our ground. There's a real long one over here that we won't use at all. The leads that come with your kit here are a lot longer than what we really need. So I'm going to start by simply cutting mine off to about four inches. We'll cut them both the same length. Now we'll need to strip the ends of those wires that we just cut off. I'll give them a little twist. And then, before we solder them to the connector, I'll tin them a little bit. This is how I do that. To start with, I've weighted the wires down with this tool so they can't dance around too much. I'm simply going to take the wires and add just a little solder, let them drink it up just a little bit. That'll make it easier when it comes time to put them onto our connector. Trying to solder to this barrel connector while it's rolling around on the table can be a little difficult. So I've got a little trick I'm going to show you that'll make it a bit easier. I've taken two sides of our case and put them together just to form a little bracket. I can stick the barrel connector through this hole, attach it with the nut, and now I've got something that I can hold on to while I do my soldering. With that secure, we can solder our red lead into the short lug. I'll rest it right in place there. Get my solder. With these lugs it takes a little longer. You have to heat them up because there's so much metal there to warm up. But we'll get it going. Add a little solder to it. Let it flow. And that one's done. Now I'll just simply rotate my jack a little bit. Black one goes in the next lug, which is the medium sized lug. I'll put it in there like so and solder that in. Let it flow. There we 
we go. Now my friend Robert says we should take these things and twist them up and because there's two lines, twist them together so they're all one neat piece. But you know, <laughs> I can't seem to get the twist to come out right. So that bothers me more than anything else. I'm gonna leave it the way it is over here and we'll start putting this case together. I've done a complete video on how to assemble this case. It's something you definitely want to do carefully. These little tabs on here can break off if you bind or twist any of these things. Make sure that you take a look at that video before you start assembling your case. We'll just jump through it real quick here so you can see how it all comes together. Let me show you one last thing before we hook up power to this thing. I made this little tester just so I can be sure that I've got the polarity right on the project. I cut the end off of an old wall wart. It's the right size for our barrel connector. And then I stripped out the lead that was ground. I used my multimeter to be sure that the connection here at this end goes to the sleeve over here. I want to be sure that I'm testing ground. So now I can take this little adapter, plug it into our case, put one probe here, and as we did before, I'll test the case there. And I know that we have the polarity right in our wiring. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. We've got the DC power connector installed on our case it's ready to go I think it's important to mention that according to the specs on the Northwest Digital Radio website you can apply 9 to 15 volts to this connector and they do recommend that you use a fuse if you'd like to order one of these cases for your own UDRC and Raspberry Pi check the links in the description below and links in the video to find out how you can do that I'd be happy to send one your way. And speaking of clicking links and things, those of us that provide YouTube content for you really appreciate it when you click like and subscribe. See you next time.